There is a hot new web application security testing tool out and about called Kaido. So I'm online at kaido.io and they say Kaido aims to help security professionals and enthusiasts audit web applications with efficiency and ease. And this is pretty cool. You might be familiar with Burp Suite or the Zed Attack Proxy, other tools in a similar nature, but hey, they get into all those sweet features and how they've modernized it. Kaido is written in Rust, so it is blazingly fast and it's super duper easy to extend it, add some new capability and features and functionality. You can search through and filter through some of the web requests that you make all throughout your work, and you even got a little bit of workspace. Hey, some structure and clean streamlined solution to manage different projects or whatever you're up to. Anyway, I don't mean to drag you through the rabbit hole. Let's kick the tires and play with it. Let's click the button to download now, and this is really cool. You can run Kaido on your own usual testing device with just a desktop app, or you can host it remotely using the command line interface. That's pretty cool. You can set up some multiplayer, hey, other operators, other bug bounty hunters and web security testers in the mix, but of course it is cross-platform. Run this on Mac, run it on Linux, run it on Windows. I am running on Windows to kind of kick the tires here. So let me click the download desktop app button here. With that, we'll pull it down and get this thing installed. It is just an MSI file, so super easy, we can click run, next, 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 you know the drill, and it'll fire it up. Once that has completed, we can go ahead and click finish. Now that we've got Kaido up and running, I can go ahead and click start on this local instance that'll start a proxy server up on the port 8080, just like you're used to with Burp Suite or any of the others. I'll click start. Now here's the first launch where we say welcome to Kaido, but it says, look, you have to be logged in to access the Kaido instance here on this device. So I don't have an account, but we would log in once we have one set up. So if I click that button to create one, hey, it'll bring us to dashboard.kaido.io slash sign up. So you can go ahead and create an account if you haven't before, and it's worth doing this. Once you've got an account set up and you're logged in, you'll find yourself at this getting started page for the Kaido dashboard online. With that, you could take a look at your instances, hey, maybe change your plan, set up some settings, documentation, and tons of other sweet stuff. But if I hop back over to that Kaido app, we could try to log in, where you might have seen a URL for just a quick second for, hey, adding a new invitation to use this device. In which case, hey, it's already found it because I've logged in in that browser session, so now we can just give our new instance a name. I'll just say Windows VM, and with that, we can register this device. You've got the usual sign-in boilerplate, hey, yep, this Windows VM is not hosted by Kaido, this has to be a device that you control, you trust, we'll go ahead and allow it, and now we are authorized. If I alt tab, hey, pivot back over to Kaido, now we've got a little bit of a tour of what the application can do for us. Check this out. First things first, we need to create a new project. And that's how all of this is organized within Kaido. They help organize your workspace and they'll show us, look, we can create a new project up in the top right. We will create one. It'll give us a little button to say, hey, what do we want to work with here? Project names can be anything from pen test clients to bug bounty programs or just product names that you're hacking away at. We'll click it away and we'll say we are just simply testing Kaido. I think that's fine and fair. Let's hit create there. And you've just created your first projects. Projects you create will show up in this table. Now we'll click next and we can switch between the projects that we'd like. Obviously it shows our current project in the top right, dig in that, but ultimately we should set up a CA certificate. That way with HTTPS or other things we might be hacking on on the internet, we can trust Kaido to be the intermediary proxy to interact with it. They do offer a little bit of a tour to set this up, and I love this because look, I'd never seen this much in Burp Suite or any of the others that I've kind of played with. I'm sure the resource and information is out there, but I'm just not smart enough and I haven't tracked it down. So at the very, very top, we can download the CA certificate. That will bring us back to our browser. We'll go ahead and keep to store this CA certificate. I can open the file here if I want to fire it up. And now we have the Kaido certificate. Super easy, we can just click install certificate. We'll install it for either the current user or the local machine. In my case, I wanna place a certificate in one specific store. I wanna put that in the trusted root certification authorities. We can click OK here, go ahead and click Next. It tells us, yep, we'll go ahead and get that certificate in to those places. So I'll hit Finish, and then it'll prompt me, hey, are you sure you want it put up with Kaido's certificate? We'll hit Yes, and then the import was successful. Click OK to exit out of here. And I honestly just speed ran through, hey, what we might be doing if you set this up in Google Chrome or whatever browser, but you can toggle this between Firefox or Chrome, and they'll give you the instructions one way or another.
They also offer a little bit of a quick crash course on how you can manipulate, switch back and forth, and toggle between a proxy set for your browser, in which case they suggest using Foxy Proxy. Browser extension, something that we've showcased previously. In this video, I won't actually be using Foxy Proxy. There's one that has come with this virtual machine. And if I hop back over to Google Chrome, the web browser that I've been using at the start, we can show you this. I'll open up the options. This is the Switchy Omega tool. Maybe that's worthwhile and interesting for you just as well. This is already pre-configured to work with a profile called Zap or the Z Attack Proxy, and it just has the HTTP hey, protocol working on port 8080, as we would expect for hey doing this work. So with all that set up, we can now finally really use Kaido. We can go over to the overview and the navigation on the left hand side, explore any of these, but the site map is where we can start. And now if we do really want to use Kaido, well, we should have a target or some testing application, something that we can explore to really try Kaido on. So for this video, I would love to showcase one of the labs from the Intro Labs repository, online GitHub resource from Black Hills Information Security, Anti-Siphon Training, and John Strand. I've talked about them a ton. I'm a huge fanboy. I love their work. And they have some sweet module on web testing. Oh, and by the way, that whole tribe of companies is always putting out some incredible, fantastic, and phenomenal education, material, and training. It is pay what you can, of course, but a lot of these labs, I'll have a link in the video description, and you can check out the real thing. These are even given away for free. Huge thanks to that crew for sponsoring this video, but let's dive in to that web testing lab. And honestly, this is pretty quick, simple, and easy, because inside of that virtual machine that's provided for you, I'll have a link in the video description, you could just spin up and run DVWA, the damn vulnerable web app, and even another opportunity for D... SVW, I always get that acronym confused, for the damn small vulnerable web app. They showcase this in a super simple, quick and easy way where they actually use Zap, the Z attack proxy, to fire up a couple different attacks and see what it might be able to track down. I totally encourage you to try the lab with Zap if you'd like, but I figured this was a perfect opportunity to help introduce and showcase Kaido. So just to get things cruising, let me open up a terminal and then fire up DVWA, that damn vulnerable web app. The lab is super easy. They've already got a command stage for us just to spin this thing up with Docker. So I will copy and paste that and get DVWA up and running. This spins it up on port 80 so we could just get to our own IP address. Let me grab IP config over on Windows and I am that thing. So in a new tab in my web browser of Chrome, I'll just go to that IP address and here we are with DVWA. They offer the credentials super simple, super easy. It is just admin password because we want to use this as a sandbox, a little bit of a playground to work with some vulnerabilities or have a web app that we could beat up. With that, we'll go ahead and create a, the database. Click the button at the very bottom and now we'll cruise through, log in one more time and we'll have a ton of this stuff available for us to play with. Take a look over on the left hand side, brute force, command injection, CSRF, file inclusion, tons of stuff. If you haven't played with DVWA before, totally recommend it. And man, I should make some videos on this thing. <laughs> what we need to do now though, is actually toggle over to our proxy in our browser settings. We could use Foxy Proxy for that, or in this case, our Switchy Omega extension. And we did already have Zap, that profile stage and set up for port 8080. That is what Kaido is listening on, so we'll switch into that. Now, if I get back over to Kaido, you should be able to see, hey, in our site map, we already see some connections, hey, the HTTP requests that came for this application. Going to DVWA, all the things that it might've seen in that connection for index.php. Take a look, you can see the raw HTTP requests present here and the response that's returned back out to us. Now, what we can try to do is add this host, this target into our scope, knowing that this is only what we wanna be testing and not any other web pages that we might see or you know browse to within our web browser. So we could add in scope or add out of scopes, but currently we don't have any scopes available. We need to go create one over in that scope part of the navigation. Super easy, we can just add a new preset and we can rename this over on the right hand side. We'll just call this DVWA. If I pull this over, you can see that we could add things in scope or out of scope. In scope is really all that we need to worry about as sort of the allow list here. We could just type in our 192.168 whatever address, or we could do the very, very same back in our site map, do the right click and now add to scope since that has been staged. The best thing now is that at the very top left, we could set the scope and toggle in and out of whichever ones that we want if you happen to create multiple. Say you're testing, you're doing bug bounty hunting across multiple different targets. Well, let's just filter in on what one you really care about across the whole Kaido application. 
Now, if I went back to Google Chrome, my web browser, say I Googled for whatever, Kaido, getting the results coming in here, hey, seeing this all in action, Kaido.ai again, that's not gonna be included within the sitemap of Kaido because we're not in that scope. If I didn't have that set, you could see all of those connections here, but ultimately we wanna zoom in on the target DVWA in our case. Now those were our top two navigation items in the overview. Of course, filters is another option where you could actually use some of the HTTP QL, like search query language that they've set up with a whole lot of these options here. I won't drill down into that too much, but it's pretty cool to know that it exists. The intercept page though for proxy is what you might be most used to in classic traditional burp suite, but it has a couple different vernacular terms to be able to use here. We'll click the forwarding button on the top right of the page to begin queuing and that'll put us in a little bit of a different mode here. If I click that button forwarding, you'll see that toggles to now queuing. And if I go back to our web browser, whoops, we don't have our scope set properly with that, Again, super easy, we'll just toggle it in and out, but you might've already seen this request come through. In that case, it's Google Ads. Yeah, thanks, so we can drop that. <laughs> now that we're focused on DVWA, we can get back to our application. Back at the home page for DVWA, here, I'll open this with uh, our tab so we can see if I were to try to go to the instructions page, it'll hang. It's kind of stuck in time here. You can see my spinny wheel trying to load the web page, but that's because Kaido has caught this here in the queue or what you might usually see the Burp Suite proxy doing. And here we're doing it with the intercept functionality and we could manipulate, we could toggle, change, I don't know, make this a post request. We could add, manipulate our cookies. And I realize my face might've been in a way, but if we wanted to forward or drop, we could do that. Forward, we'll just let the page load. Hopping back over to our web browser, we can see now we've loaded the instructions page. One sweet thing is though, you could just go ahead and turn on the responses view if you wanted to see that as well. Now, every time you load a page when you're queuing and not forwarding, we could toggle these on and off just easily anywhere. But if I were to refresh this page one more time, we'll see it back and forth in our app here. Kaido will tell me, do I wanna drop or forward? If I forward it, now we can see again the response come right through. Super sweet. If I try that process one more time, let's say I were to forward and then get a response, one of the neat things is, look, I could totally tweak and change whatever I might like in even the response. So I could say, please subscribe, ha 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 ha. Forward that. Now, I don't know how well you can see it. I know it's a little bit of small text here, but I've changed the title and the HTML element and been able to manipulate what I as the client received when it's a response given from the server. I can just tweak it. That is some cool capability you could mess with in some match and replace, set things up for new rules or default collections where you could say, look, any things that I kind of want present here, I could even say a search or replace for any of the requests, responses, anything that we want to toggle in and create a ton of those. That's kind of neat. I realize I hop over a couple different navigation items though, but obviously our HTTP history shows us everything that we've already seen just by browsing around, navigating to, and working within our web browser. Of course, we can set our scope here back to the specific application we care about, and with that, we just filter down on that. I won't drill down too much into the WS history for WebSocket streams. I think that's pretty neat though, maybe in a capture the flag sense or bug bounty, whatever you might be up to. Pen test when you're digging into WebSockets present in a web application, you've got just as well, another little proxy, another little history thing you could view here within Kaido. Let me get back to maybe a clean slate here. So I'll turn queuing off and get back to just regular forwarding so our proxy won't get in the middle of things. And if we wanted to replay or automate or do any of the testing things in navigation here, this is where it gets really the rubber meat in the road. This is the functionality that you might already be most used to if you're working with the burp suite. The coolest thing here though is because you've got sitemap and anything that you might already interact with, you could just send that over. If I go to our instructions, maybe right click it up here. I could send that to replay, send that to automate, or even highlight it in a different color if we're thinking, you know what, that's a spicy one to dig into. We'll touch on workflows in just a second, but let me show you replay and automate. Cause say that I was interacting with the command injection section or any of these others that I wanted to tweak and tinker with, command injection seemingly lets us ping a device. In which case we'll just ping 127001, whatever, simple localhost. I'll go ahead and click submit. 
And there's nothing fancy here, no secrets. It's just going to ping that address. However, we presumably have a command injection, kind of the premise of this lab. So you could see maybe some other things in the history. If I wanted to run 127001 or I don't know, maybe comment something out, add a semicolon to start a new sub command, anything or can stack on, let's use ID. So we could see, hey, what user are we currently running as? I'll hit submit, takes a couple seconds to call that back, but we've got our WD data, the output of the ID command. Obviously, back in Kaido, now we've seen a little bit more capability within our sitemap. We're tracking through everything that we've done here in these nice, neat, and clean folders. Take a look. Hey, there are submissions, maybe a little bit on the side here, and we could see both the response and the request as we pull through. But here's the coolest thing. We can manipulate these. We can even prettify them. You can see the button down below. But if I were to send this to replay, you'd see that nice little icon display there. And with that, we could just send this over and over again, like the repeater functionality that you're used to, maybe in Burp Suite or other tools. Say I ran Who Am I, just sent that along. Takes just a second to see the results come back. But as they queue through, take a look, we can scroll down, get the full HTML response of the web page, and we'll see our dub 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 data output of the response and command there. We could toggle this, we could play with the payload, we could do anything. It's the functionality that you're already used to, but a little bit more streamlined, a little bit more clean. Because I know a heck of a lot of folks will say, look, I use the repeater tab so, so often that I have tons of these within Burp Suite usually. But in this case, it's always gonna be saved for you because of our cloud-based Kaido account. And we could toggle in and out of that as we view things for our instance. And of course, we can rename this tab to anything that we might like, and we can stack them up and clean them. Like if I wanted to change this collection, maybe rename this to DVWA, and maybe that's for I don't know, potential code execution bugs. But if we added a whole nother session, then you've got another tab that you could use with this replay functionality, or you could even just add a whole new collection and you've basically got another folder where you can manipulate this into SQL injection. Once again, add another collection and you could have as many of these and where you can enter the collection URL, do whatever you really want. So the replay functionality is pretty easy to buy into. But look, I mentioned all the things that you might be able to do, and especially how a lot of this is tied to your cloud account. If I were to jump back over to the Kaido dashboard online, dashboard.kaido.io, take a look, invitations, this is when we saw, oh, our new host or our device being added in. You could see the instances, of course, our Windows VM, maybe edit this, tweak this, do whatever we wanted to to rename it. But I think it is absolutely important to show you the documentation. So when you click this link, you're taken to the documentation. And this is awesome because look, Kaido is still in beta. It is still in development. They're still adding to the roadmap and we can go take a look at that if you'd like. They make it public and available. But you'll note, look, my version number, if you caught it was like 0.36. It's not even a full feature fledged release yet, but it's getting out and about in the community. Super duper cool. And if you had any of those FAQ frequently asked questions, look, that's where you can get those answers. I don't wanna drag you through all this, but I do wanna show you that this is absolutely something you should reference if you go play with a couple of the cool concepts, like the instances for our own endpoints, HTTPQL, if you're gonna query and look through some of those specific filtering language capabilities. Workflows we'll dig into in just a little bit. I wanna save that for the end, because I think it is the coolest thing. And ultimately, look, the features we were exploring just a bit ago. We dug into replay, you can see that in action. We could also now dig into automate. And this I think parallels really, really well with you might be familiar with the intruder capability of Burp Suite. And as this thing is still in development, you don't have any like streamlined push button, easy button attacks. Oh, scanning, spidering, all the stuff that it might automatically do. Like maybe Z attack proxy. But again, you could configure this. You could tweak, you could add some workflows and extensions as you'd like. Let's try to experiment and explore with that automate tab. So I'll go click into this, but you will need to now create a new session. And of course we could just switch into this from the sitemap if we found any endpoints, any actual URLs or pages of the website that we wanted to explore. I think one fine way to showcase this might be the brute force section. So if I click into this, we could try to log in, I don't know, say admin, admin, post to this, but that says, oh, username and or password is incorrect. 
But now if we pivot back into Kaido, you can see there's a new page, a little subdirectory, a little folder found for us for that brute functionality. In this case, we made a get request to the hosts and target in question, and we could see all the capability here. The get request was made with these parameters, username being admin, password being admin, and we could send this to replay, or like the repeater equivalent if we'd like, or we could send this to automate. Let's click that button. You can see the little notification pop up and automate. Now we've got this session here. Of course, we can rename this to brute force login. And here's the sweet stuff. Because if I wanted to say, oh, username, we could toggle or manipulate. Let's leave that as admin for now. But let's do another password here. We could provide, oh, just password is our placeholder. That is where we'll sort of fuzz or add a marker for really what we'll put in place with anything in a list of other entries or data or payloads that we want to provide. So let me just click the plus button while I have this password kind of highlighted. If I do this, we'll create it as a placeholder. You can see how this allows me now to change the payload, uh, set up a placeholder, and we could specify whether we want to use a file that we could just provide to Kaido, or we could use a simple list where we just type in, oh, I love you, please subscribe, whatever, whatever, whatever. We could even just as well use a null payload with a ton of randomness stuff, or let's go back to the tried and true trusty hosted file. But this tells me you don't have any files yet. You need to go put these in the files section. If we scroll down over the navigation, that's actually in our workspace. The workspace on its own shows us the projects and backups, but files is where we could really add our own capabilities with dictionary word lists or things we might use to enumerate and brute force, do recon, whatever you'd like. Let's browse to a file, and I have just now downloaded rockyou.txt, so a little bit beefy, but let's go ahead and upload that. And with that, we can get back to our automate section here, change the payload to the hosted file being rockyou.txt. We could make some changes. I'll move my face here, but take a look. If we wanted to change, oh, the delay, some error handling capability, close connection or update content length, ultimately, we'll go click the button. Let's run this thing. This is gonna start funneling through all of the specific tasks that we might have running here. And I just opened up, oh, the ongoing tasks toggle in the top left. But look at this. It's cruising through all of the potential passwords set up for that admin account. We can see the status code, HTTP response, maybe the round trip time, the length, et cetera, et cetera. And we've got, what, however many requests already? We'll go ahead and pause this because I don't want this to hey, just be a giant mountain for us to dig through. But of course, we can scroll through any of these to see them or click into them to see, oh, what's the raw HTTP request and response coming through. One of the coolest things we might be able to do is really just filter on any of these columns. Of course, the payload, of course, the status. Looks like just about all of them are status 200 A-OK, -okay, but the length might help clue us in as to what's good, what's wrong, what's not working. Maybe 484 telling us that, whoops, we broke something some way somehow. But I'm curious, do we have anything else? Let me toggle length one more time. We see at the very, very top, ooh, there is a another length response with password being present here. Of course, you could filter this stuff out with HTTPQL if you want to play with that language. But look, the response value for this, let me bring this up, and if I scroll down through the response here, looks like it says, ooh, welcome to the password protected admin area. So we must have found the correct password being password. Whatever, super simple. This is just for the showcase and get them play with Kaido. One of the really cool things though is again, you could prettify this down below. Let me move my mouse so that's visible. Click that button, nice and easy. And they even have some capability to preview the HTML here. Maybe you could open this in your web browser, uh, but it doesn't actually have a rendering engine. If we wanted to install one, we totally could. Oh, sweet. That was pretty cool. I honestly had not even done that yet, but take a look. Yeah, it's rendered the page in that little preview there. And now we can see the text. Look, welcome to the password protected area admin. Oh, and by the way, if you wanted to, you could click up here to just open a browser. In that case, you could use whatever might be installed, launch for that or edge anything. And I haven't given some love to the commands capability up here, but you've go, of course got all these hotkeys, keyboard shortcuts if you wanna jump to any of them or just type them in super duper quick. The hotkey to even open this panel is I believe control K. So I could control K to close it, control K to open it, nice and good. Now, I know this is getting lengthy, but there's some other stuff that I still wanna show you. Of course, in logging, hey, maybe you could search through all the stuff that you've already provided. They give you some syntax up at the top if you wanted to see, oh, HTTPQL in the mix. Maybe click into any of the other preset stuff that you have created in those filters. 
Of course, drill down to scope as usual. Export stuff if you'd like, very cool. Findings down over in the navigation I'm interested in. I don't believe we can create one just manually, but we might be able to tie things together with some workflows. And with that, we should showcase workflows. But exports are pretty simple, pretty easy. I believe just a log of what you might have clicked the button for to export. Assistant, oh, you could use some chat GPT AI shenanigans. You can choose whether or not you'll press the I believe button on that. That does take a little bit of coin, but otherwise Kaido is totally free with some limitations as to what's up. Anyway, let's get into the sweet stuff for workflows. I think that this is awesome. You could basically configure whatever you want to happen when something else happens, right? Run custom logic when specific events take place for a passive workflow. You've also got active workflows when you right click specific events or you manually trigger and activate something, or you could convert some things. Oh, I don't know, maybe use some capability for base 64 decoding, URL decoding, other capability. If you'd like to create a new one of those, you totally could. You've got all the capability with JWT, JSON Web Tokens, MD5 hashes, SHA-1 hashes, blah, blah, blah. But take a look at how this all comes to life, because you've basically got like a Zapier, N8N equivalent, whatever, drag and drop node graph flow that's super duper cool. So we could create our own passive workflow whenever we have intercepted or seen a new HTTP request or response. So let me say, look, I don't want to use the request as our start, so we'll delete that, but I do want to use our on intercept response, or this will give a couple outputs, and you could actually see the variable that would denote, oh, what that is and how you could actually access it within other nodes. Because say, now I wanted to maybe do an if or else statement, add a condition in the mix. You have a couple different outputs for true or false, or I could drag in and run specific JavaScript. That's pretty cool. Say we would just simply drag, oh, the output of that into that. Now you have some capabilities as to use different pieces of the logic in your flow here. And I don't know, maybe you could stage some cross-site scripting shenanigans. Oh, funnel out a cookie or whatever, HTTP, content, whatever you'd like, to another mock bin, request bin, hook site to see that material. One that I think is kind of the coolest is that you've got the capability to run shell commands. So you can very, very easily hook this up to any other of your own tooling. Let me drag these two together one more time and you could say, look, these are the variables that we might be able to work with. Let's get the response data. Uh, and if we wanted to, oh, we could use CMD for Windows, SH, bash, whatever, the Linux world, PowerShell again on the Windows world. Look, I could run whatever code I might like and we could access specific variables like the data in some cases, or even just the Kaido URL. Now I'm wrapping this within two percent signs because I am in Windows. Oftentimes you'll prefix this with like a dollar sign. That's how you might see it referenced in uh, some of the other operating systems you play with this in. But say I wanted to put that in as just a placeholder right now, see Windows tasks, test.txt to validate that we even see that as a variable for us. But imagine if we were to not do that and if we were to like run cool to create a custom word list over and over and over again as we navigate through different pages. Hey, maybe it pulls down for each new page or maybe we do something to automate slapping in XSS payloads or attempting some SQL injection. That I think is pretty, pretty cool. Let me tie this together again. We'll just bring this to the end of our workflow. If I hit save, we can see that in action here. Maybe make this a, I don't know, testing workflow, or as we might run later, like custom word list with cool. We'd add a long form description if we'd like, but if we save that, we can get back to our passive workflows and see that that is enabled already for us. We could toggle that on or off if we'd like. But now if I were to go back over to our browser, take a look, we've got our vulnerabilities page or just DVWA. Let's bring me back to the very start here. See the web page loaded. Let's try to go to the SQL injection tab. Now if I actually hop over to Windows Explorer, I can navigate to C Windows Tasks. And with that, I have my test file created. This was just the simple proof of concept to see, look, that is tracking the URL, but that means we could hook this up to cool. We could hook this up to like Subfinder or Linktree or whatever, whatever you want. But here's the thing, I can't say this enough, take a look at the documentation. Seriously, click around, take a look, oh, maybe what the assistant might be able to do, what the workflows might be able to do, and how you convert different things, and really just get an idea for how this all comes to life. Kick the tires, play with it, use a small, simple app like DVWA, and if you wanted to, look, there's more you could dig into. 
I don't know if you notice it, but they even have a little link for custom workflows and the community workflows. If you want to take a look at what they have made available and public, they have a repository where you can see this all coming to life. And that's pretty sweet. You can see what others might have already added for some passive workflows and maybe even add your own contribute to the community. On top of that, I would be remiss not to mention, look, they're showcasing the roadmap. They're making this out in public. And if you'd like to drill down into them, hey, go take a look, see what else is to be released, what else is gonna be coming soon. And you can toggle into the front end or the back end or any of the other specific focuses on anything that you might be interested in. It is really cool to see this kind of made public and available though. If you want to go see what's coming up next, Kaido is still actively in development. They're always doing really cool stuff. The Kaido team is also always hosting these really cool town halls where you can see, hey, a little bit of the feedback, some of the communication from the community and see what's up and in progress and coming next. I love that they make this public out and about, but you can still use Kaido even as it is right now for a lot of the work that you might do. Now look, I have only scratched the surface of all the awesome things you can do with Kaido and there is more to come, but if you haven't kicked the tires yet, give it a try, play with it. See, will it replace Burp Suite or the Z Attack proxy or whatever tooling is already part of your workflow? I'll admit, personally, I would like to use this more so than Burp Suite, but that's just me. I have always, you know, uh, struggled and whined and complained whenever I had to fire up Burp Suite because it takes a little bit of time, whatever nonsense. I don't know. Totally personable choice, but if you're interested, I want you to know Kaido is a thing that's out there and go give it a try. Hey, thank you so much for watching, and especially thank you to Anti-Siphon Training, Black Hills Information Security, John Strand, and all their incredible crews doing the pay-what-you-can training. Seriously, if you'd like to get some education, get some more learning material, and even some labs, like the free labs we just got to showcase and see on GitHub, even as a vessel to experiment, play, and try new tools like Kaido, that is a sweet way to do it. Check it out with the link below, tons of links in the video description, but thank you again and again. I'll see you in the next video.